I came out to express my support for the notion that the uh, United States of America should really belong to the people who live here and who work here and who create the wealth of this country, and not just the people who manage the instruments of wealth. And I'm a retired professor in economics from Washington University and I'm as active as I ever have been and enjoying every minute of it. I'm here because I've been waiting a long, long time for this revolution. What are we really standing for? In a simple phrase, we want our democracy back. And that covers a lot of it. There's corporate power and there's the wealthy, wealthiest 1% and they've taken over our Congress. The Republican Party is a wholly owned subsidiary and the Democratic Party has been rented out. Right? So we have to use other ways to get our voice heard. And we are. Every day it's been more and more. And we're going to keep at it. This is the real thing. Make no mistake. This is going to be as big, bigger than the 60. And it's going to transform our country. And we're going to get rid of Citizens United. And we're going to get rid of all this corporate money that's affected, influenced, and really destroyed our democracy. We are united. And we'll stay united. You're here. I'm here because my mother, she lost her home of 18 years that she owned. Um, I'm here for the, the homeless veterans who served their time in the military and now they have no assistance. Um, I'm here for the indebted uh, college students who are in debt and they've been to going to school to try to get them a college degree. I'm here for a lot of reasons, the homeless on the street. I'm here for everybody. I want to be the voice of the people, the, the voice of the silent. Okay, so why are you here today? Um, I think that this gathering and gatherings like this that are happening throughout the country are kind of a long time coming. Um, I think this is just kind of the beginning of what we're seeing in terms of people really waking up and, and realizing just the inequality in the system um, as well as just people being more invested in, in ensuring that their own needs are met. Um, I'm here because the system that exists today exists to make fat wallets even fatter than they already are. You know, I have a job. I work 40 hours a week. I get paid well. They give me $1,500 in tuition assistance a semester. I'm set, but I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about the future of my friends and my family and what's going to happen to a country that's so stunted economically that there's no way to move forward at this point except to change. There's there's no forward movement except for a lateral shift from here. So what that's why I'm here. What kind of change do we need? Transparency. It's all about transparency. You cannot have a system that has money that does not have corruption unless you have 100% transparency. You need to remove the curtains, remove the mist, take the man from behind the curtain and show everybody what's going on up front so that they have an idea of what's actually going on so they can make informed decisions instead of blindly running around like chickens with their heads cut off. I mean, the thing is, there's a lot of people here. You can tell they want to be here. People want to make a change, but this isn't enough, you know? Only... Only with everybody else can we do anything. We are the 99%. Not the 20, not the 10, not the 30, the 99. Unless you've got a private jet or you own the Cardinals, you're one of us. Join us. We need you. You are the person we need. Every one of you. Everybody reading this blog, if you're reading it, you're not the one. Trust me. This is what you Median wages have been flat for 30 years. The American dream is being outsourced. Debt, crime, and war seems to be the business of the United States instead of creating jobs, infrastructure, renewable resources, and energy. The things we should be focusing on are demonized. You know what I mean? And uh, somebody's got to stand up. They can't. Poor and working families have got to be represented. And now's the time. What's, what are our 
uh, like one or two major things we need to do to turn the tide. Campaign, fan, uh, campaign finance reform to me is number one. Got it. Legal, legalized bribery is destroying our our democracy. It's just it's insane. It's and the other thing is outsourcing jobs, uh, giving tax benefits or not taxing at all companies that are sending jobs overseas every day. And now we got new free trade agreements that are coming up that are going to pass with broad bipartisan support. And that's just unsustainable. I mean, what are we going to do here? 70% of our economy is consumer spending. If consumers don't have a job and don't have money, who's going to buy the widgets? Well, I'm here for several reasons. But uh, first of all, that's Bank of America, and that's Peabody Coal. And they, Bank of America, took all the houses. And everybody's underwater anyway, so my client base is gone. You know, so one bad year turns into three. Somebody said, let's go shake signs, and I said, yeah, we're going to shake some signs. I want really, literally tangible things like lower interest rates on my credit card and higher interest rates on my savings account. And it starts from there, and it builds up to the fraudulent system that kind of gets away with things behind closed doors. If you know terms like shadow banking and the exotic financial instruments they use called derivatives and all these things that uh, have largely gone ignored by the public and haven't really been investigated thoroughly by anyone. And I'm, I've been disappointed. I voted for Obama. I'm not, I don't represent myself as a political as a liberal or an Obama voter. At, and uh, I, I find uh, solidarity with even Ron Paul supporters here. So I think, you know, we've been become so highly polarized, the spectrum in America. And this is middle America. This is where the Petri dish and the control group people should really be concerned that it's been so polarized that it's kind of bending and connecting in a way like people like me who identify themselves as liberal Democrats and people who may be Ron Paul supporters or I don't like bailouts. It seems like a large portion of maybe Tea Party members Members, they don't like bailouts and I, I realize I'm speaking political terms but this is a global movement and what really energizes me to see is I, I, I think I fully understand that that throughout human history this is a simultaneous spontaneous global movement apparently that now that we have globalization and very interconnected economies that it affects everyone, basically, and I'm glad to be a part of it. I only would ask, how can you not serve these beautiful young people? To the people of my age, how can you not get off your behinds and come down and help these beautiful young people who have nothing to look forward to? We are handing them nothing. We have shoved down every kind of debt, and uh, it is not on them. It should not be on them. We have to take back some of that responsibility, so I would just urge the 55 and up <laughs> cohort to please come on down. Great.